Revelation 1, verse number 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Let me read that again. And when I saw him, capital H, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. We will continue what we were saying last week Sunday. And this is with regards to the marks, the signs and manifestation of the baptism with the Holy Spirit. What is the sign? How do I know that I am already baptized with the Holy Spirit? How do I know that I am baptized with the Holy Spirit? We have said before that it is possible to be born again without being baptized with the Holy Spirit. There are many Christians who are born again, but they are not baptized with the Holy Spirit. There are many pastors who are preaching the Word of God today, so-called Word of God, and they are not baptized with the Holy Spirit. The reason why I'm saying this is that Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he told the disciples to tarry in Jerusalem. He told them to wait in the upper room. Don't preach yet. Don't talk to anybody yet about what is going on. They were already born again. But he told them not to preach. He told them to tarry in Jerusalem. He told them to wait at the upper room. He said because the Holy Spirit will come upon you. But you will be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And after that, you can go out and preach. But without the Holy Spirit, please wait there. But you remember what happened, Peter and some of the apostles and John and some of the other apostles, they went fishing while Jesus told them to wait at the upper room. But this disciples, Peter led them, and uh, it's all over. All of these things with Jesus died and crucified, and uh, Jesus just let us down. But that was after the resurrection. We told them to wait. They may have waited there for a few days. They may have gone to the, uh, to the, uh, to the upper room there where they had the supper. They may have stayed there. And uh, the place was quiet. Nothing. Nothing here. Nothing. Nothing. So Peter must have beckoned to them, let's go, as the Bible puts it, a fishing. <laughs> let's go fishing. So went, so they went, left all the way from Jerusalem, and they went to Galilee, the Sea of Galilee. And they started fishing. In other words, these were men who were born again, did not wait to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, but they went doing their own business, which was fishing. And at that time, as I said, Jesus was resurrected. So they were doing their own business. And the same thing you have a lot of pastors today, a lot of Christians, born again, but they have not waited to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, and they just went on preaching on their own. And what did I say? Anytime a man 
is preaching without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that is lecturing. Because you cannot give what you don't have. You have not been empowered. You have not been trained. You have not been quickened. You have not been energized. You have not been baptized. You have not been initiated. You have not been trained. So what do you call people like that? Fake. When a man is not doing the work of God, he's doing his own work. And this is what you find in the church today. Peter and some of the disciples, they went to the Sea of Galilee, and there they were, doing their business. They were born again, fishing. And then Jesus appeared on the shore. These guys were at the Sea of Galilee, far away. They've been there toiling day and night, nothing. <laughs> And this is what is happening in the church today. You see all the pastors jumping up and down. The Lord told me this. Look at the church in Nigeria. Comedy of errors. Look at what is going on in the church. Fake people, all kind of people like that. Peter, James, and John, they went to fish. Why the Lord said, stay in the upper room. They went to do their own to gather money from the congregation, extort the congregation, fleece the sheep, manipulate the people. And Jesus stood at the shore looking at them. These were people who were supposed to be in the upper room. They were toiling, toiling, nothing. Have you seen how the pastors in Nigeria are toiling? Toiling. No wonder one pastor said, I've been preaching for... 40 years, he said, but it's my own I've been preaching. It's now, at the age of 70. Thank God for that pastor. Praise the Lord for that pastor. Because there are some who will never... What am I saying? I'm saying that it is possible to be born again without being baptized with the Holy Spirit. And there they were Jesus standing at the shore and just looking at them. The Lord is always looking. Looking. Throw the net on the right. The Lord shouted unto them, Throw it on the right. And they had the voice, Throw it on the right. And Peter said, ah, this is, Somebody is saying, Throw it on the right. Okay, and they threw it on the right. And as they carried that thing, that was heavy, man. Fish. What? They could not believe. And Peter said, but we, we are here already. <laughs> we were here 10 minutes ago. We threw the net. How come all of this thing just appeared here? Many of you know that the Lord ordains everything. He does not only know for know everything, he preordains everything. And the net was heavy. Perhaps tons of fish. No, and they knew that no, this is not ordinary. And then John the beloved, he told them. He said, who said throw, throw the net on the right? I could see there's a guy wearing white at the shore. And John said, I think it's the Lord. And Peter jumped into the water. What am I saying? I am saying that it is possible to be born again and not be filled with the Holy Spirit and not be baptized with the Holy Spirit. 
And we also saw that the, when the Holy Spirit, when a man is baptized with the Holy Spirit, it is unmistakable. It's something that you know. This morning we are talking about the marks and the signs and manifestation of the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And of course, we talked about this before. That one of the major signs of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that you preach Jesus because the Holy Spirit is the baptism, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. So when you are baptized with the Holy Spirit of necessity, you must speak Jesus. Amen. You must speak Jesus. When a man is drunk with wine, of course, you, you will know. But when a man is... Do, do people get drunk with water? No. They can be poisoned with water. But a man who drinks excess water does not manifest the way a man who drinks excess wine. They are not the same thing. The man who drinks excess water may vomit, but his eyes are still clear. But the man who drinks excess wine, of course, uh, he, will start, uh, he will start talking. Do not be drunk with wine wherein is in excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, <clears throat> we said that the manifestation, the, the marks and signs of the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they vary from person to person. They vary. And some of these variations, they are maximum in some people and they are less in some people. I am saying all of these things so that when you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, you don't say that, oh, this man was, when he was baptized with the Holy Spirit, that was the sign, that was the mark. So it must be so with me. No. To when two people get drunk, there are some people, they are drunk, but they are just quiet. They used to talk before, but when they are drunk with wine, they just keep quiet. They are just looking at you. There are some people they drink one bottle of whiskey and they just quiet. They just calm. And occasionally they are smiling. <laughs> Shock me to success. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, in those days, I mean, in worry before, almost every young man in worry before has boji. Praise the name of the Lord. This place is. It's too quiet. If, I mean, if you grew up in worry, of course, uh, you must have smoked Indian hair. I mean, that's the term I'm using. In worry, you, you, you boji, or you must have taken monkey tail. That is Indian hemp mixed with Ogoguru together. If you grew up in worry, you must have done this. And we all know this in worry. I mean, this is a place where people shock. <laughs> Amen. There are some people who take half a bottle of Ogoguru and, uh, uh, and uh, you, you, you see them, they are just smiling. Different manifestation in different people. As the man is cutting the booze down the bottle and going down, he's becoming calmer and calmer. He just smiles once in a while. <laughs> he becomes gentle. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. There are others, when they cut the booze, you see that they'll be shouting, Your father! Your father, the Chris! Stupid man! 
<laughs> you see that. But others, as I said, they just have. Good morning, sir. <laughs> they, become, <laughs> they become surprisingly gentle. What I'm saying is that the, the science and baptism with the Holy Spirit, it varies from one man to the other. I want to take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 so that you enter, I want to lead you into the service in which you see the people are baptized with the Holy Spirit and the way they were behaving. Amen. In the service of those days, the, 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 the church in Corinth, because the Apostle Paul has said himself in Ephesians 5.18, he has said, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is in excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse number 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, when a man is filled with the Holy Spirit, just like he said, do not be drunk with wine. When a man is filled with the Holy Spirit, one of the signs is that he will do what? He'll be speaking to yourselves in Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down. <laughs> See this boy. This man is drunk. He will be speaking in Psalms and he will be, he said, speaking in Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart. And you'll be giving thanks when a man is drunk. So to prove that, because this speaking in to yourselves in Psalms and hymns is not just the type of service we have. It's not like the type of Orthodox Anglican churches that we have where they sing hymns. No. That's not what he's talking about. Because some think superficially it appears like, oh, that's why we sing hymns. There are some people who come here to our church like this and they say, why are you singing all of those songs? You should be singing hymns. And then they go and show you this. But what is he talking about? That is, what is the meaning of this statement? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Or in the King James Version, it says speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. What does it mean? You will find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And in, in this 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we go to verse 26. He said, how is it then? The theme, the grand theme of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 is the apostle is trying to show, is trying to correct the excesses of this brethren who are baptized with the Holy Spirit. The apostle is trying to correct them that this thing, you are taking it to another level. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, what you see there is you, you enter into the service and you see this 1 Corinthians, you see them, everyone, he says, in verse number 26, how is it then? Brethren, when ye come together, every one of you had a psalm, had a doctrine, had a tongue, had a revelation, had an interpretation. In other words, what he's saying is that when you come to the church of these people who are baptized with the Holy Spirit in the Corinthian church, what he's saying is that as the service was going on, because these people were baptized with the Holy Spirit, what 
what's happening is that some were singing, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want him, make me to lie down. Some people were saying, then sings my soul, my savior. And everyone, and this one was, uh, so everyone, each one was doing this, this one was doing that. This one was speaking in tongues, this one was, uh, 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 I mean, interpreting the tongue. Another one was prophesying, this one was uh, a doctrine and said, uh, we were crucified with Christ. And the whole place was, and the Apostle Paul came in and said, hey, hold on. What's going on here? Amen. Amen. That was it. Each one was, because each one was baptized with the Holy Spirit, so they showed this science. They manifested this science. But let me tell you ahead of time, because these signs that were manifested, these were objective signs. These were signs of somebody looking at them. When you look at these people who were baptized, these people who were baptized with the Holy Spirit, this was what they were doing. Let me repeat it again. Some speaking in tongues, some interpreting, some doctrine, some shouting some so what the apostle Paul came here to do was to correct these excesses so what therefore does it mean the term speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual song it is the manifestation of these gifts of the Holy Spirit in these people as they speak to one another in psalms and hymns. Each person was... And really, this type of thing, it happens even till today. When you see people, the presence of God falls, and you fall, and this one is doing something. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for stealing yesterday. Everybody is doing their own. Everybody is doing their own. And in, church, in some churches, they, there's a bell. They ring. Bah! Call everybody to order. It's okay. And then all eyes will be open. In other churches where there's no bell, the pastor will just wait. In Jesus' name. Then everybody will say, Amen. Then all eyes will be clear. They do that in some churches. So the apostle is calling to order all of these excesses and is saying that this thing can be done in a better way. That one or two can speak at a time, not everybody doing the same thing. So the purpose of 1 Corinthians 14 was to deal with these excesses brought about by these brethren who are doing these things in an inorderly manner not orderly, in an inorderly manner. They are reacting in an inorderly manner to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So the signs of the baptism with the Holy Spirit, I, they are identical in their character, but they vary in the degree. They are identical, but some people have it more, some people have it less. Some people speak in tongues, big tongues, some smaller tongue, some people prophesy a lot, some people less, some people so all of these things they are identical but they vary. So these experiences you can group them into two. The first one are the subjective experiences, the subjective science, marks of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I said last Sunday and this, ob this subjective science, subjective in the sense that they are signs that each person feels inside him. What I read to you in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 in which you see the people, this one in tongues, those are objective signs which shall come to them. Because as you look at them, 
you see that man uh, speaking in tongue, so it's objective. You that is looking at the man, it is objective. You see that one interpreting, you see that one preaching. Jesus, the son of David, this one is preaching here. The whole church, everybody. Some people running, some people climbing the wall, some people climbing pole. You know, if you are a pastor and you too you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, you will just understand. You don't get offended. And that's why some people get offended when they come to this church. They see somebody rolling on the floor. And they say, what is that? What is that? Is this church? Or they see somebody climbing the wall. Or they see somebody run! <laughs> <laughs> something never touch you yet. <laughs> when something touch you, you go run. <laughs> Especially when the Holy Spirit falls on you. You see some people shout, I'm not going to run again! I'm not going to run again! I'm not going to run again! You start wondering, what are you not going to do again? <laughs> He's ministering to the Holy Spirit. He's talking to, to, I mean, to God the Father. What he did uh, last month, or even what he did 10 years ago, he's repenting. But all you are here, I'm not going to run again. I'm not going to run again. Huh? And you are wondering, is this church? It's church. That's how the church should be. Amen. Amen. But this apostle, the apostle Paul, he said, cool down. Because at that time, of course, there were the fivefold gifts of the resurrected Christ, the apostle, the prophet, the teachers, the evangelist, and they were all operating at the same time. But the apostle is saying, no, 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 no. This thing has to be done in order. One or two persons will speak. At that time, the church is not like this, where I'm standing here and talking like this. No. The church was not like this. The, the, the things were still evolving and all that. So everybody was, and that's why these things are written unto us who live at the end of the ages so that we don't do like that. Amen. And this is what it was. So the apostle, even while the apostle, because there were some people at that time who said that, oh, the Holy Spirit fell on me so I could not stop what I'm doing now. That's, I'm just teaching. I'm a, I'm a teacher. So it's just teaching and uh, uh, teaching and nobody's listening. This one is teaching there. This one is talking their doctrine. This one is uh, prophesying. This one is, you know, the Apostle Paul says the spirit of the prophet is what? It's subject to the prophet. It's the Holy Spirit fell on me. I don't know when I did talk. No, you know. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. He said the, the Holy Spirit is not like an unholy spirit that takes possession of you. The Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. If you, want to, if you want to stop, you can stop. Amen. So, we have two. It's divided into two, the experience. The subjective one and the objective one. So this subjective experience, it has to do with the response inside us. When a man is baptized with the Holy Spirit, what we saw in Acts chapter 2 is the objective thing. That is, people looking at them. We saw that they were speaking in tongues, they were prophesying, some were interpreting, as we saw in Acts. You go into the, into the church, you could see. But this one, what is each person feeling in his own heart? That is the scripture that I read to you. First, the Revelation 1, chapter 17. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. There are, and we said last week that the foremost inevitable sign is this sense of the glory of of God, an unusual sense of the presence of God. And many of us have experienced it. When you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, there's this awesome sense of glory. You feel 
the presence of, of God in the, a type of experience that you have never experienced before. A kind of deep joy and love. You feel the, the glory means joy, gladness, love. It overwhelms you. Words cannot describe it. So you see, when children of God are in this position, they just want it to stay like that. Like Peter said on the Mount of Transfiguration, when glory came upon Jesus, when they saw Jesus was transfigured, Peter said, Lord, let's just, uh, let's just camp here. Let's just stay here. An awesome feeling of the glory of the presence of God. What the Holy Spirit does is to make real to us the things which we have believed by faith. All of these things become alive. Suddenly, they come alive to you and you are just rejoicing. Your faith becomes stronger. Your intellectual understanding of the articles of faith, the union with Christ, it becomes real. You now understand when the Bible says, I am crucified with Christ. You didn't get it before. Suddenly, you just, wow. All the this, this scriptures, the scriptures, they just come alive to you inside it. You see, when Peter stood up in the book of Acts chapter 2, when he stood up at that day of Pentecost, all the 11 apostles, they all stood up at the same time. I'm sure Peter must have beckoned to them. Wait first, wait first, let me talk. What we saw, what, what, he, what he said, what the apostle Luke was describing in Acts 2 was like a journalist looking at an event and seeing what happened to them. But he did not describe the subjective feeling. He did not describe what was going on in Peter's heart. What happened in the heart? That's what we are talking about. There was this sense of glory. There was this understanding that Peter, who didn't, this Peter that was always talking nonsense, this Peter rose up to start speaking perhaps what he didn't even know. Or what he knew a little bit, what he knew half when was not very clear. That even the onlookers, they said, this guy is a fisherman. Even the Pharisees, what? Look at the, his articulate. He's speaking with confidence and he's speaking sense. And they were all amazed. So in other words, what we are trying to look at as the subjective experience is what was in Peter's heart? How did he feel? In looking at this matter, I came to the conclusion that Peter or Luke did not interview Peter. How did you feel in your heart? Because if he had done it, if Peter had said, oh, my heart tottery me, then that would have been a standard for everybody. Or, I felt like this. But remember, I told you that when two people get drunk with wine, they don't have exactly the same experience. And it is for this reason, you see, today there are some people who say, if you don't speak in tongues, is a sign that you are not baptized with the Holy Spirit. You see, and that is wrong. There are many people who are baptized with the Holy Spirit and they don't speak in tongues. But they are baptized with the Holy Spirit. There are some who speak in tongues, but not as much as others who speak in tongues. So, clearly, The Holy Spirit makes some of these things that you have learned, that you are imagining, He makes it real in your heart. This is something that stands out in all the instances 
in the New Testament and in the subsequent history of God's people. <clears throat> because any time the Holy Spirit falls on a man, it is true, there is a tendency to speak. The Apostle John said, I felt as dead. That was his own experience. But we all know it, some of these things. There's no need to argue. There are some people when they are filled with the Holy Spirit, they, you, you find them, they speak in tongues. And what is this speaking in tongues? It's trying to, it's trying to, it's trying to call uh, 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 my father, Abba Father. I'm going to show you later. Uh, God, words rush into your brain and you're trying to express and the speed at which they are coming into your brain, your mouth is slow. <laughs> and you, you find that this is it's like water going through a pipe. I mean, your, your tap at speed. <laughs> like that at speed. And uh, it, you, 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 you cannot, <laughs> the brain cannot read it and say it. Everything comes like that. It is possible for us to have an immediate awareness of the glory of God. Customarily, we walk by faith and not by sight. But here, there is something over and above that. You just know the presence of God. When the Holy Spirit, how many times have I been in a service when the pastor says, believe me, the presence of God is here. <laughs> and uh, uh, then people start looking at one another or they start looking at the door or they start looking at the door uh, the presence of the Lord is here you see when the presence of the Lord falls you don't need to tell anybody you don't need to tell anybody everybody knows they know for the man that has who is baptized with the Holy Spirit before, or who is being baptized with the Holy Spirit, he, you, you, you don't need to tell him. The signs, it will manifest in him. It's not something that you say, oh, the, believe me, believe me. You, you just don't know. Uh, something is happening in the spirit realm now. Believe me, please. Uh, trust. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit is here now. And then people, oh, he did, yeah. Okay, okay. As pastor talks so. But uh, uh, then when, when, uh, when the families are going home, pastor say, Holy Spirit, a day for church. I, I don't see him that time. Huh? I don't see him. Then the husband, who is the pastor, eh, you don't see him. <laughs> he means he'll be baby Christian now. Huh? <laughs> he'll be telling the wife. You know, wives are always uh, baby Christians. The husband is always the matured Christian. So you may say, you don't see, when the pastor say Holy Spirit day, you don't see, I don't feel him, I don't see anything. And they look, and they look, I don't see him. He day there, you don't see him. Me, I see him. Then the wife says, how you see him? Tell me how you see him. He day, and they tell you, he day. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. When the Holy Spirit falls, Everybody knows. Amen, somebody. Amen. If, what I mean by even everybody knows, even those who are not born again, they will know that something is happening. In the book of Acts, 120 of them were baptized with the Holy Spirit. And when they started manifesting, even the multitude, they say, what? These guys are drunk with wine. And they said, look, they speak our language. How come that even some of them from Egypt, they were speaking the Egyptian, they were speaking the language from Cappadocia, the Elamites, different languages, they were speaking. So it was a sign to them. Amen. Tongues is a sign to unbelievers. 
So it's not something that you have to argue about. I never see him, I not see the Holy Spirit. And also, inevitably accompanying this sense of the glory of God and his presence is also the sense of awe. Sense of awe, surprise, glory, something that you cannot describe. Eh? What will be this? It shocks you. You are polarized. Your mind becomes blank. You cannot explain it. Amen. You find that, look at Isaiah. Isaiah's vision of God and his sense of awe. In Isaiah 6, 1 to 4, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. This thing that this event that Isaiah is describing is the same thing as today. The same throne, it has not changed. Verse 2, above it stood the seraphims. Each one has six wings. With twain he covered his face. And with them he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Isaiah said, you know, this is Isaiah before. Who was preaching as a prophet talking about holiness? When he saw the Lord, he said, Show, 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 show. <laughs> if Isaiah were a worried man, I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm a, I'm a sinner. I'm an unrighteous man. You see the glory. This sense of awe. This is what happens when a man is filled, when a woman is filled with the Holy Ghost. It's not something natural. It's something supernatural. It's not business as usual. It's not a lecture theater. There, there, there cannot be that type of order. As you see, as you see in First Corinthians chapter 14, nobody will listen to you. When the presence of the Lord falls down, the prime minister, the president can be seated. You will see the person manifesting the signs of God. He has seen something that is above him. I saw a video of a woman who was filled with the Holy Spirit in the plane. <laughs> and the woman started manifesting all of these signs. You cannot talk to him. You cannot tell him, oh, quiet, quiet, we are in the opera, no noise. Oh, quiet, quiet, the president is speaking. Donald Trump is speaking, and somebody there, in the hall, is baptized with the Holy Spirit. He has seen something greater than who? He's in another world. He's in glory. You see the person. <laughs> you see the security man. Shut your mouth. The person is not listening. That's a terrestrial voice. He's seen glory that is above what he's seen around him. He's reacting to glory.
Amen. Think of Moses and the burning bush. The glory which made him stand back. The voice of God. Think of John in the book of Revelation, the scripture that I read to you. He fell at his feet as one dead. You know, you know the angels that came that rolled the stone away, an angel came and sat on that stone. The authorities in Israel at that time, they had, they put some soldiers there to guard the tomb. Because if not these Christians, they will come and steal the body and say that he resurrected. The angels just appear. You know, you know sometimes the way God fights his battle, it's not even the way human beings. Glory. <laughs> just show the soldiers glory. The soldiers who had AK-47 in their hand, To shoot any threat, anybody will come there. And then the angel came, and then the soldier went. <sighs> what was that? He saw glory. <laughs> glory. So you cannot. He, he saw something that was beyond him, something he has not seen before. In fact, in his heart, he will see you. He started even caring, now enemy be this. Have you ever driven in your car before when you see an antelope on the road just gazing at the light? The antelope is not running away, just looking at the light, the glory. And you drive there and almost catch the antelope. Some people just drive on there. That's the phenomenon how why antelopes are killed many times. You see them at the middle of the road. They are just looking at the light. They are just gazing. They have not seen that type of thing before. Glory. That sense of glory. Amen. Amen. That was what happened with Moses. That was what happened with John. The Apostle John said, I, he, uh, the Apostle John was dead. There are some people who will scream. When they see glory. Some people will run when they see glory. Some people will climb the wall when they see glory. Some people will sing. <laughs> Some will dance. <laughs> hey, hey. Before, Moses, before David, they dance. Your Buluku, they show. I don't know what David see. <laughs> the wife can't love David. David, king, just a misbehave. <laughs> they will say, waiting and see if you see him. <laughs> Glory. Praise the name of the Lord. The Apostle John said, I felt as one dead, his own. The Apostle Paul had a glimpse of the risen Christ on the road to Damascus and fell, fell down, blinded. You see his own? Blinded. And suddenly there shined around, round about him a light from heaven and he fell to the earth. Now, let me say one thing before we go. We are going to overshoot the time just with five more minutes. Another pronoun so that we can finish this today. And next Sunday, we'll look at the objective signs. Another pronounced characteristic that always accompanies the baptism with the Holy Spirit is the spirit of assurance of the love of God to us in Christ Jesus. And this is most important and remarkable. When you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, that 
spirit of assurance falls on you. Everything becomes real. The love of God in Christ Jesus, it becomes real to you. You feel that God is my father. He loves me. You feel it. When you tell people, Jesus loves you, oh, they leave that matter. Leave that matter. The Son cries, it. Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you. When the presence of the Lord falls, when you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, you have this assurance of the love of God, the assurance of your salvation. This is perhaps the greatest and most essential characteristic of the baptism with the Holy Spirit. He makes us witness because of this assurance. In other words, the, 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 it is assurance first that leads to the witness. When you have the assurance that God loves you, when you have the assurance that you are a child of God, that itself propels you to witness. Everything comes alive to you. You become a witness. Even if you were not there in Jerusalem, you see it clearly. You live it again. It becomes alive to you. The thing that makes a man a real witness is his assurance of these things. All these things that you know, they come alive unto you. It is one thing to speak as an advocate. You know, if you have a case in the court, this is my experience, and you take a lawyer, the lawyer will speak as an advocate for you. He will represent you. But many times, because of the way lawyers are, and because they have many clients like you, many times they are not living your own case. If you have a case with a lawyer and you don't follow that case properly, make sure you understand the case. You may not be a lawyer but you start learning about your case, your legal rights, your position in law about your case, so that you remind your lawyer. You discuss these things with him. You ask him questions. If you just leave him like that, he's an advocate. He'll just be an advocate. He's advocating for you for this, for this, for that. But it is a different thing. When somebody who is a witness an advocate is different from a witness. A witness is a man that saw it. I witnessed it. It happened to me. But the liar is saying it happened to him. But the witness is saying it happened to who? To me. It is not the same. An advocate is different from a witness. A witness is telling you directly his own experience. He's telling you his testimony. But advocate is telling, this is what happened to him. He may not be able to describe it in detail. He may not be subjective enough to describe the subjective signs and all that. But you will be able to say exactly what has happened. You can study it. You can read it. It may have been preached to you the way I'm preaching it to you now. But that is not enough to make you the witness. You become a witness when that spirit of Jesus, when Jesus baptizes you with that, with, with that spirit, then you have a personal experience about it, then you can say, this happened to me. This is my experience. Amen. And that was what happened to the apostles. And that was what happened to all of those Christians who you see in the Colosseum 
who died for Christ. They knew it. They stood and they were not shaken. They were witnesses of these things. Amen. And that's what the Apostle Paul was saying to the Galatians. You foolish Galatians, who bewitched you? You who were witnesses of these things. Let me conclude by saying this. The marks and signs of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they vary. They are identical in character, but they vary in degrees. Some people more, some people less. Like when you are drunk with wine, some people their reaction is maximum, is way out. Some people they are calm. They drank the same thing. One glass of whiskey, the same one glass of whiskey. Two people, the other guy is calm, but the, this other guy is loud and all that. But the two of them, they drank the same, the same quantity. So also it is. And we said that one of the signs, notable signs of the baptism is this sense of the glory of God. Is this sense of the presence of God. You feel it and nobody can take that thing from you. Nobody. You know it is an experience. You lived it. And it's like a well in you. A well of living waters that comes out of you. And that gives you the assurance of the love of God. It tells you that you are a child of God. We shall see that. That you are a child of God and you are born again. It, 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 it gives you the assurance of your salvation. You know you are going to heaven. You know if I die today, I'm going to heaven. You are not afraid of anything. You are a man and a woman, or a woman, that stand for Jesus. Shall we put our hands together for the Holy Spirit? Amen.